Hey there, little mama. I am wondering, are you dealing with anxiety <laughs> or stress or has it gone to even depression and you don't know what to do? I got to tell you, you're not alone. In fact, we're all feeling that way and especially our kids. Our kids can feel that way. It may not be about an, a war somewhere or something terrible that's going to happen in the adult world, but they have their little stressors too. And it's really super, super important that we get that under control or find ways to manage it so we don't wear ourselves out or and teach our kids to have a good uh, method to be able to handle the stress and the anxiety that will come in life. Okay, we're going to be talking about it today on Moms Like Us Do Things Just Like This. Welcome to the Moms Like Us podcast, where moms just like you learn strategies, systems, and skills through expert interviews and real-life insight designed to take your marriage, mothering, and home to the expert level. Hi, I'm Mona Corwin, your mom mentor and host, author, international speaker, and the founder of the Moms Like Us Academy. I've been coaching moms for over 25 years, and I have some really good news for you. Motherhood isn't a natural talent. It's a skill, and you can learn it. You can crush it at motherhood instead of motherhood crushing you. So let's get to today's show. I got to tell you, I've got a really special treat for you today. Her name is Kara Snyder, and I met her at a conference, and I was just blown away, number one, by her story. Her story is so sweet and wonderful, and how her knowledge base from that time in her life has moved her into helping other people with anxiety and stress. But more than that, she is going to she's going to make a difference in the world and in your world when it comes to your children and your tweens, even your teens. I mean, after all, once we figure out how to do this, we should be able to do it for our whole life. And Karis is going to help us with that. Now, Karis is a speaker, she's an author, and she helps people figure out how to handle stress. It's and and so it doesn't lead to depression. And if it does lead to depression, she even helps there. She's a graduate of uh, the University of Alabama, and she just finished a book. I think she has a new book out too. But this book right here is called "There's an Elephant on My Chest." And as soon as I saw it, I thought this is a book that is so easy for kids to understand, and it gives them tools. You know what we're all about here on the Moms Like Us Acad in the Academy for sure and on the podcast and the show. We're about the how and the why. We do want to learn the nitty-gritty of stuff so we can implement it. Because moms like us, we do things like this. So I'm gonna bring Karis up out of the green room and we're gonna chat. Hey Karis. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm so glad you're here. I just enjoyed meeting you the um, the first time and spending time with you. I am super um, hopeful that mm. as even though as things get crazier in our world, that we can have our minds renewed. We can find methods and not be led astray by worry and defeat. Um, before we get started with that, because I'm real excited to talk to you about it, tell us about your family. Absolutely. So my husband and I, if you can hear it in my voice, I am from Alabama. We have been here <laughs> forever, I feel like. And uh, we have been married almost 19 years, Whoa. which is always so funny I, when I share that at schools with young kids. They're like, whoa, that's that's longer than I've been born. <laughs> and so that's always a funny uh, reaction from them. I have two daughters as well. I've got a daughter in the ninth grade. She's almost 15 a younger daughter in fifth grade, just turned 11. And we do have a mini golden doodle uh, in our life as well. So we are dog lovers um, around here. He just celebrated his sixth birthday. I, I feel like I need to, to share that information. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better than 
um, a, a, a puppy to make your life and to take down that anxiety about oh, we'll talk about that too. Yeah, so, that's right. You know, I, I love your story. Do you just want to tell just some parts of your story that you think are beneficial for how you got to where you're at and why you're so uniquely qualified to speak on this uh, topic? Yeah. So just some, I like how you said that some key points just throughout my story about 11 or 12 years ago, it was 12 years ago, 2011, anxiety and depression almost took my life. My husband and I, we were worship leaders at our church. My oldest daughter that I just mentioned in, in high school now was a toddler living her best toddler life, you know, in our home. I was a successful business owner and everything appeared great on the outside, but I was a master of the mask. On the inside, I was being crushed by the weight of anxiety. I was being crushed by the, the dread and the depression that I began to feel and was just paralyzed by and found myself in a point where I felt hopeless and, and purposeless and thought that I had failed God, I had failed my family, and that I was more of a burden and a bother to everyone around me than, than I was a help. And, you know, I, I can't not share this, but in that season where I finally, you know, I ended up in the bottom of the bottom, there were those times where I didn't think anxiety and depression were real. I was, you know, a part of the church that would tell you, hey, just pray harder you know, try harder, trust God more. And, and if I knew you really well, I, I would look you dead in the eyes and say, hey, just suck it up and move on. And, and I know, I know Jesus never, he never encountered anyone that way. And that is not the compassion of Christ. And when I found myself there, I realized just how real it was, just how heavy that weight was, that it was like an elephant on your chest and in that bottom of the bottom for me where I felt like I had two options to look up or give up. Mm -hmm. I thank God every day that he whispered to my soul, look up, look up. I looked up, I wasn't alone. My counselor and my doctor was there, my friends and my family was there and I began to find that healing and restoration. And through that, God took me back to the beginning where it started for me as a child. I was born with a mild form of cerebral palsy. And in first grade, a little boy in my class, he asked why I looked the way I looked and why I did the things that I did physically. And he began to mock me and make fun of me. And I didn't tell anybody. And I began to push things down and feel that anxiousness and put that pressure of perfection on myself early on in my life. So that anxiety for me, it began as a child. Now, back then, you know, Mona, we didn't talk about those things. We didn't talk about anxiety, mental health, you know, how to respond and deal with things. And I think that's where it caught up with me as an adult. And so as God healed and restored me and I began to share my story and wonder why we as the faith community were not being the first, the lead to talk about how faith and mental health go together. I, I truly believe that that the enemy knows when we will catch a hold of that and be a leading voice. Can you imagine the hope that's in this world, the tools that are in the tool belts of our children, our tweens, teens, even us as moms, when we begin to talk about that. And so that really became my passion to kind of go that way. And, and I'm grateful for the child development degree that I have, the, the, the education that I received, but I'm grateful, so grateful for what God taught me through the experiences that I've lived that there is hope that anxiety and depression do not have to steal life from us anymore. And we can learn how to respond to it in healthy and practical ways and truly walk out the purpose and calling that God has placed on each and every one of us. Wow. And isn't that what the enemy wants to do? He wants to lock us up mm. in our own minds, hiding away without help and without hope. Mm. And yeah. Jesus did not say that. And we do live in a broken world. It's interesting to me that um, anxiety has is like on the rise. Is it that more people are just finding out that this is, and they're diagnosing themselves? Or is it really a different time where people really are struggling with anxiety? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, 
I do think the pandemic really brought anxiety within a lot of people just because of the the trauma that we face, the isolation where we were pulled away from from one another, our children, you know, their lives were were taken and they were pulled out of school and and you know the the fun things that they got to enjoy like birthday parties or seeing friends you know, now they, they couldn't do those things anymore. But prior even to 2020, even in, uh, you know, 2018, 2019, anxiety was already on the rise. So I think even before that, a lot of the reasons that that's coming is because of the busy lifestyles that we live. Mm -hmm. We were not meant to be constantly going 24 seven, but our schedules are full. So there's no margin for rest. Social media, has come into our life and we are, you know, constantly chasing this comparison, comparing ourselves are behind the scenes, you know, to others highlight reels of uh, students. You can look at their lives, look at the anxiety that they're dealing with. And for them, that anxiety is coming from social media. It's coming from the stress and the pressure to, you know, the bar just gets raised higher and higher within their academics or when they're within their athletics. And then also, you know, just trying to find their social circle where they fit in. But we're also seeing with anxiety on the rise connected to identity. Our children are being attacked, you know, saying that they're not really what they were, who they were created to be. So all of these little pieces are coming into play and it's become like this perfect storm mm -hmm. and people don't know how to respond and their brains are getting so overwhelmed with so much information and just constant fear and worry and what we see going on in the world. So that anxiety response, a stress response will take over. And we're finding that all ages from adult down to children, anxiety is that top mental health struggle for everyone right now. And I think all of those components play into that. You know, I, I realize that it's a, a mental, I mean, it is a physical uh, struggle. But I also think it is a spiritual struggle yeah. because, like you said, the enemy knows and he knows that that little whispering, what's that song, um, Devil Not Today, and you can yeah. hear the little, if you have headphones on, you can hear the little noise yeah. being made. Let's talk about how our brain uh, works yeah. from the very time we're born. And what um, what happens to the the brain to to make it to make us more susceptible to anxiety? Anxiety, yeah. The brain is amazing. I have enjoyed just learning about it, and I continue to learn about it. But one thing that through studying and preparing, when I go to schools or I speak, you know, through uh, women's conferences, there is part of our brain called the amygdala. There's two, they're almond shaped, they're at the base of your brain. And that amygdala, it houses our fight or flight response, which we need, which helps to, to keep us alive. But the amygdala also houses our emotional responses to things you know, that go on in our life. And the number one job of our brain, it is to protect us and keep us alive. As I tell children, our brain knows how special they are, how God created them uniquely and wonderfully. So it's the number one job is to protect us and keep us alive. So because of that, it cannot tell the difference between a real danger and the thought of a danger. It will treat it exactly the same way. So, you know, when we have those anxious thoughts of, well, what if something bad happens when my children are not with me? Or if a child think, well, what if my parent, you know, forgets me and doesn't pick me up at school? Or what if I fail this test? And then we start playing out those what ifs, because those anxious thoughts, it's just like a movie reel that just plays in our head. By the time we get to the end credits, our brain now has been triggered to go in that fight or flight mode because it thinks we're in danger. And so it will trigger that stress response. And it's like this super fuel is just kind of raging through your body. And when you need that adrenaline and those hormones to run, to get away from danger, you know, or you need to fight and defend yourself, that super fuel is needed and it's great. But when we don't need it, then that can trigger that anxiety response in us that may cause us to feel things that feel scary because we don't know what it is. Our children definitely may not know what it is. You know, if it's a headache or a stomach ache or those those thoughts that keep us up at night. 
you know, or, um, you know, where you feel breathless or your heart is racing. So when you don't realize that that's an anxiety response, you don't know how to respond. So what it can do is it can cause us to freeze and we're paralyzed in fear. And so then I think there's that physical component, but I want to go back to like what you said, the enemy, the devil will come in and now he's whispering even louder in the midst of that fear. And now we're paralyzed between anxiety and fear. And that can be crippling for people of all ages. Yeah. In my own life, um, I had a tremendous battle with fear. Mm. And when my kids were smaller, for sure. But through my whole life, I remember being afraid my whole life. And I did get a hold of it when I started being closer to the Lord. And he helped me deal with the fear. But before before I got to that place, I had wrung out my sweet little brain mm. and the cortisol had just been rampant when it yeah. runs on high all the time. It's, it's not good. And my right. adrenals were affected. And then I went into almost adrenal failure. Failure. And um, it was a scary time because I thought I did this to myself. Of course, the enemy's telling me I did it to myself, sure. but it was because I didn't have the tools. Mm. So I understand that it is a mental health thing, but there are tools that we can use to help our physical body That's right. be able to manage this, all this constant where we yeah. are able to do it. And we have to have the tools. Yes. It's like I, I say all the time, motherhood is not a natural talent. It's a skill and you can learn it. Can learn. And I think being able to cope with all of the anxiety and the stress and the noise that's in our head, it's also not a natural talent. It's a skill and we are going to learn it. We were never made to have this much on us. And I agree with you about the social media being um, all the more but I'm wondering how many of our children have been stressed from the very beginning of their, you know, their lives and we're wearing out their amygdala. Duh. What? Right. <laughs> yeah. Amygdala. That's right. I did, I did right. Ah. <laughs> that may not happen again, but we're going to hope that it does. Um, but we're wearing out pieces of our body, just like if you ran a race every day. And you never stopped running, you never sat down, and you never drank a drink of water. Right. So being able to know what to do, your books, um, you have three, correct? So I have four on anxiety. Yes. Okay. I've got four on anxiety, then I've got a new one out for moms, Carline mom. Um, right. But yes, yes, okay. four well, on anxiety. Okay, four on yeah. anxiety. And this one is the one I think I showed yes. you all at the beginning. But this one gives kids... This is what we do. And it's done in a way, there's an elephant on my chest. I cannot think of a more accurate way to feel. Mm. And we may not even know that we're having anxiety. I call my daughter one day who has a um, uh, master's in counseling. And so I'm like, okay, she's going to know. I said, what does an anxiety attack feel like? This is probably 10 years ago. And she said, what are you feeling? I said, well, like, there's a really tightness in my thing. I can't breathe very good. And um, I'm still kind of, there was something going on in our, um, in our lives that I was obviously not dealing with well. <laughs> and she said, mom, you have to go, you have to go to the emergency room because we don't know whether you're having an anxiety you attack know. or whether you're having a heart attack. And man, I went in there and I carried my purse. I looked really pretty. Like I'd been somewhere. <laughs> and I went in and she said, can I help you? I said, um, my daughter thinks I might be having a heart attack, but I feel kind of okay. Before I got it all out, man, they're, they're slapping you on the thing, and you're putting all the things on you. And what they said was you're having an acute anxiety attack was what I was having. And they had to like inject my IV with things to calm me down. But I didn't feel like, like I was losing it. Is that, is that kind of help, help my, our moms know when they're to know. maybe feeling that? Right. So I, I love that because I experienced the same thing for the anxiety attack that I had several years ago. And my mom said, hey, you need to go 
go to the emergency room and make sure, you know, that, that you're okay. And it was in fact an anxiety attack that I was experiencing. And so I think for moms to be aware for themselves and then to be aware for your children, I, I do want to say, you know, anxiety can show in multiple symptoms. I mean, there are so many different ones, but some things that you can be aware of if you want to know, is my, my child being anxious or am I being anxious? You, things you can watch for are changes in behavior when it comes to your children. Are they all of a sudden having outbursts of emotions where it's sadness or anger and it's tears, or maybe they are becoming a little more, you know, not where they're more aggressive, where they may be wanting to hit or punch or yell. They may talk to you about their heart beating really fast. And for your young ones, they may say, I can hear my heart beeping. I hear my heart beeping because it's beating so fast. Um, and then I, adults experience that one as well, being breathless, feeling like you're you're going with just a good normal breath, like you and I are talking right now to all of a sudden, I can't breathe. I feel like I'm going to pass out. Um, stomach aches is really a, a one of the ones that children are going to have quite a bit. They're going to say their stomach hurts or their head hurts. And um, they're going to, you're going to have difficulty focusing, concentrating on task. You know, for me, Mona, sleep, I lost so much sleep with the anxiety that I was experiencing because the thoughts when I would finally get still, right? The thoughts would just race through my mind. Like if they were on a little hamster wheel and they would just get faster and faster and faster of all the what ifs. And so then you may see that your children are struggling sleeping at night. So these are all some things that you're going to see. There may be fidgety, worrying, uh, looking. Another one that children will do is constant reassurance. Are you sure you're going to pick me up at this time today? Um, where, where will you be? Will you be in the same spot? Or, you know, are, are you as the, something that I would do for reassurance is I would go around and I would check the locks on our door. Oh did gosh. I just lock the door? Did, did you did you put the garage door down? You know, I would yeah. check check those. Is that something that you you can relate to as well? Oh, totally. And yeah. um, for you in the Moms Like Us Academy, uh, Karis is going to be teaching a master class, and it is going to be how to how to how to handle how to respond when your children are are yes. acting this way, and how to respond when you are feeling feeling this way. So um, you moms in the academy are really going to learn a, a, a big time how. Uh, if you're not in the Moms Like Us Academy, why not? <laughs> you should be <laughs> because we go deep in the how and the why and mm -hmm. we mentor each other through, well, you can are mentored by mentors that will take you through um, the issues that we're, we have every month. We have a new one mm -hmm. and we walk through it until you learn how. Because that's so what good. motherhood is, right? That's our little saying. Uh, let's let's talk about the um, the devotional that you had. With it being a devotional, I know that you're a, a Christian, and so how do we put the God component into it? I know we have a lot of people that yeah. understand the science, right? We understand that's the right. science, but we have to know what. God's word says in it and what it can do for us. So right. t t let's talk about your devotional. Absolutely. So I have devotionals for tween boys and girls, and that's going to be like your nine to 12 year olds. That's a 90 day devotional. And then I've got one for adults as well. And I wanted to make sure that when people read the devotionals, they see that these practical coping skills are already grounded in biblical truth that God, you know, already met us there. So they're not separate. Faith and mental health are not separate. They do in fact go together. And so with the devotionals, the way they're set up is you're gonna read a scripture and then there's gonna be some text in there about that scripture and then maybe even part of my story. And then there's gonna be an action step, a coping skill, for example, for you to take. And, and I love just through studying scripture that we can see, for example, you know, that when it comes to deep breathing, when you deal with that anxiety attack by pausing and taking deep breaths, well, we can focus and think back like Genesis told us that God breathed his breath of life in us. And when we're pausing and taking those breaths and thinking about, wow, the breath of God is in my lungs. It gives me chills. I mean, I have chills all over just thinking about that right now, how that can calm us down. Or if we think about, you know, Galatians 6, 2, where we're not, to, where we're to bear one another's burdens, that 
community is a part of dealing with anxiety. So how God already met us there, Philippians 4, 8, if you have what if thoughts, well, what is, what is true, what is noble, what is pure, what is excellent. These are the things to thank God. And so all of those components are within the devotional so that you are getting scripture, you're getting truth, but you're getting an action step to put in your tool belt to know how to respond when that anxiety comes and to know that you are backed by God's word and his word does not fail and it does not return void. Right? Mm -hmm. So we, if we can teach our kids that like, this just gets me so excited. If my kids can learn how to be equipped against anxiety or that feeling of dread or depression now, when they are adults, when they're, you know, thirties, forties, fifties, how different can it look for them when they go they're through amigo, life? They're amigo, they're amigo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to get it down. I am. Yes. That is such an important little organ that we have, but it will not be worn out. Mm, that's right. If we have this and I have to tell you, I am the moms that know me. I am not a devotional girl. I will mm. not tell you to do a devotional. I will not encourage you to do a devotional, but when it comes to something like this, like anxiety, Karis's devotional is perfect for this because the one thing you don't want to do when you're anxious is sit down and read a book about anxiety. <laughs> you're so right. right. You don't want to. And <laughs> you can't take any more. Mm. Like you don't need someone else telling you scripture. You need the Holy Spirit's power mm. and God's word does not return void. So in her devotional, with it being just a little bit every day, especially, I haven't seen the tween one, um, the tween boy and girl one, but the adult one, be able to just slowly learn and you're able to just take in a little bit. Because right. when you're feeling anxious and stressed, you, you feel like, I, I can't, not one more thing. Don't show me one more thing I'm not doing right. And if I'm reading, even an article or a podcast may be too much, but your book yes. it gently helps. And then the, um, the action step is, yeah. for me, it is a perfect devotional for yeah. someone with anxiety. So yeah. I want to really congratulate you on a great job. Really, really good job on that. Thank you. Well, and you spoke so well to it because I can remember when I was in that anxiety, I couldn't read a long book or a long chapter. I could do one small thing. I mean, just one tiny thing. And that was the heart behind each day. And so you, you spoke so well to that. And so, um, cause I remember you need an action to take, you need a step to go. You don't need multiple ones. You just need one. And so that's the heart. That's the heart behind it. Well, thank you for, um, writing all your books. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing the hard work of getting not just healthy, because that doesn't always happen with anxiety. Sometimes we live, people live their whole life with their anxiety. It doesn't mean yeah. they're not doing a good job, but you did the hard work of really wrapping your head around it to be able to communicate it in a way that it offered, does offer hope mm -hmm. and actually things we can do, tools. Right. And man, I just think if we just teach our kids this stuff, it's going to be so helpful. And yeah. in a culture that is biblically illiterate, which is kind of a hard word to, to take in, but we don't know God's word. And I was there too. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. And when I finally started looking at my Bible, I thought everybody knows and I don't know any. Hmm. And I just started little by little memorizing scripture and learning it. You know, it's one of the things that I am so passionate about, about teaching people how to read the Bible so they can do it by themselves and they don't hmm. have to rely on other people for stuff. But, um, and I'm passionate about it in the academy as the moms know, but I, I just, I want you to get a hold of God's word. The mm. answers are always there. The path may be hard. And as Karis has told us, there's hope and there's help through the Holy Spirit and it's God's word. So, Karis, 
Do, is there something that you would like to leave our moms with? I would just want your moms to know that they're not alone, that God did not make a mistake in calling them to be a mom right now for such a time as this, you know, that mom guilt wants to grab a hold of them, but you're be free from that. God, he equipped you and he called you and created these good works in advance for you to do. And the mom that you're being to your children, to your tweens or your teens right now, God created in advance right now for you to be there. So keep learning these tools, keep walking this process and letting him hold your hand, lead and guide you and just know that he's with you. He's with you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. And he's going to continue to help you walk this mom journey. Oh, thanks so much. Well, moms, yeah. Karis and I are going to hop off of here and we're going to do the class. She's going to do the class for the Academy. And I just want to thank you for coming on the show, Karis. And I want to thank you moms for joining us because moms like us, we do things like this. So why don't you pass this on to another mom mm -hmm. and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Click. <laughs> Hi, I hope you liked this episode of the Moms Like Us show. And if you did, I hope that you'll share it. You'll share it with another mom friend because you know, moms like us do things like this. I also hope that you will check out the Moms Like Us Academy, where we take ideas like we've been talking about on the show, but we go deeper. We just don't get inspired and think, oh, that's a really good idea. I think I want to try that. We actually learn how to do these things and why we need to. And then you know what? You have Mona, the mom mentor, and other master moms that teach the master classes in there. They come alongside and we, do, we don't leave you alone. We help you implement and really, truly change your mom life into the mom life you've always wanted to have because motherhood isn't a natural talent. It's a skill, sweetie, and you can learn it. So go and check out the Moms Like Us Academy today and find me when you get there and say hi. Bye.